companies determine a demand curve by analyzing the relationship between the price of a product and the quantity that customers are willing to purchase at that price. So if I was at 70, for example, maybe customers are willing to purchase 400 units at 70. But if I go up to 100, that might drop to 200. So there are a couple different ways that companies determine this demand curve. First one is through surveys. So they send out uh, surveys to understand how much customers are willing to pay for their product or service. So for example, there's a chat GPT survey that was sent out. How much are you willing to pay for a premium chat GPT? And I responded $20 a month. And then a few months later, I saw the pricing for it, and I don't know if it was individualized to me or for everyone, but my price was $20 a month. So that was an example of a survey and how they collected information to be able to understand how much I was willing to pay for that service. Okay, a second method, historical sales data. Okay, so sales data and we can see from the sales data if we adjust the price up or down we might see a corresponding uh, decrease in demand as it goes up and as the price goes down you might see a corresponding increase and so can we use this data between the price and the demand in order to be able to get that curve Okay, a third way, a third way that companies collect this information is through experiments. So instead of just looking at historical data, they may purposefully increase and decrease, maybe by small amounts, on, especially on retail sites, online purchases, where you have almost commodities for these different products move these up and down ever so slightly or maybe even run promotions or other things to experiment with different price points and explore that demand curve all right and a fourth way a fourth way that companies uh, do this is through market research so understanding the the market landscape understanding the broader competition understanding how customers view their product or service in relation to other options on the market. So in addition to surveys, you can send people out that can really dig into the market and understand and try to get that uh, demand curve. So we're gonna go through just a sample application today where we're going to have this demand curve that's already determined for us. And we also know that we're gonna try to maximize the profit all right, so it's going to be this product. It costs maybe $50 to produce. And whatever price P we can demand, then we're going to say price minus 50 is going to be our profit. Okay, so our profit per unit sold. And then we have the demand. And then that's going to give us this curve to determine the total profit versus the price. And what we want to do is try to maximize, okay, try to maximize the total profit. So I'm going to open up a, okay, just a uh, text script here, and we are going to save this uh, as a Python file. So the very first thing that we're going to do is just from Gecko, we'll import the Gecko library. Now, if you don't have that, you can just go pip install gecko, and that will download and install the latest version. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this as a Python file. Okay, and I will do pricing.py. Okay. So here's my Gecko file. I'm gonna create a new Gecko model here. All right, if you wanna solve without an internet connection, you can say remote equals false. All right, 
I'll have my price. This one is going to be a variable and then also the demand as well. That's going to be a variable as well. I could say I want a lower bound of 50. Maybe that's the cost to produce it. So I know it has to be higher than that. And then the demand, let's just say the demand uh, lower bound is 100 or I could say zero, for example. OK, so let's go ahead and create a new equation. And this equation is going to come from this demand that I had uh, written out. OK, demand double equal sign. And then I'll do 37771178 times P to the, um, and this is going to be negative 2.154. Okay, so there's my first equation. And now I want to maximize. Okay, I'm going to try to maximize P minus 50 times D. So there's my total profit for all the units sold. And then I'll solve the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this one. Um, okay, so here's the pricing. And I'll just open this up with ideally, or you can run it through a command prompt or through Jupyter Notebook. So there are many different ways that you can run this. Um, and if you have something where you're getting that immediate feedback and you're trying to determine a price every day, you could automate this, for example. Okay, so, oh, I messed up on the, um, this should be the Python, okay, power right there instead of uh, the caret sign. Okay, so it looks like this one solves successfully and you can see the objective there. So let's go ahead and print out the solution. So I'll uh, print, I'll first of all just say the price equals p dot value. Okay, zero, and then let's also get our objective, and that's going to be m dot options objective function value, and and let's go ahead and just print this out. I'll print a formatted string. We say that the price is going to be dollars, and then we'll have the price, and put a two decimal place. Uh, show two decimal places of that and then end the string. Okay, so there's our price and then let's go ahead and copy that and then here is our total profit. And that's going to be our objective value. So if I run this again, then you'll see there's the price, $93.33. And there's the profit, uh, $9,343.95. But let's go ahead and just um, see if we can view the solution um, and be able to look at it, not just, not just the, uh, the numerical values, but where we are with some of the other uh, values, options as well in terms of the price. So I'm just going to copy this in. I'm going to import NumPy and calculate between prices of 55 to 110. I'll calculate my demand and the profit, and then I'm gonna plot this. Okay, so when I run this now, it's gonna produce this figure that's going to show me my demand curve, and it shows me the orange dot where my optimal solution is. And it also shows me my profit as well, with the maximized value. Now, let's just, as, as a business owner, there might be some reasons why you might not want to go with the maximum profit. Okay, so let's just explore some of those. Okay, so here's this, uh, this chart. Now, let's say, okay, so this is the maximum right here, maximum profit, but let's say you want to try to keep competitors out of your market space. So you might be willing to give up about 5% of the profit to be at $9,000 profit, 
right here um, at an $80 price point instead of at $93. Okay, or if you're having supply shortages, you can also be at $9,000 at about 112. And what that's going to do is it's going to lower the demand to under 200. So if you're having supply chain shortages, again, that's not too different than that optimal value. And it gives you a little bit different, um, you know, in one case you're producing about 300, in the other case you're producing about 190, but almost the same profit. Or if you're right here in the middle, you're producing about uh, 205 to 210 uh, in terms of the demand. So there are a couple different reasons why you might want to try, uh, you know, setting your price a little bit differently. The other thing that um, is important, and I'll, I'll share with you this web page with the source code and just with a couple other um, options for dealing with uncertainty in this demand curve, because this is not going to be definitive. It's going to maybe change with seasons. Uh, you're going to have daily, weekly, monthly, annual uh, cycles in the demand as well. So there's going to be some uncertainty with it. You can deal, you can have models that, that track the seasonality, or you can just deal with the uncertainty as well in a couple different ways. One is a feedback control mechanism that can be used to ensure product or service availability and so you might have a dynamic price point that raises or lowers the price as the supply fluctuates. Okay, and then you also might have optimization strategies as well that use uh, regression statistics to determine these confidence regions on this demand curve and then optimize under the uncertainty. Okay, and there's uh, the linear regression was shown there. Uh, also Gaussian processes. Uh, this one is very nice for dealing with probabilistic models that can be used for regression tasks. Okay, and then you also have an overview of additional regression methods. So in addition to linear regression, uh, there are many other regression methods to determine that demand curve. And down here at the bottom, you'll see a, a very nice package called Lazy Predict that you can use to run all of these different regression algorithms to help you get the highest R squared value or some other metric that you want, um, like root mean squared error, for example, along with the time that it took to perform that regression. So many different options for regression, uh, especially in determining that um, this demand curve. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's a little bit, um, you know, removed from some of the engineering optimization uh, tutorials that are here in the course. Uh, for nonlinear pricing, it's more of a uh, operations research and management type problem. But um, I was just inspired by this Stack Overflow question that uh, just came in recently. And so that inspired this, uh, this question and this problem and uh, appreciate the Practical Management Science uh, book that provided this example as well, along with this question. Um, I'll just mention one thing with this as well. When you use a linear demand curve, you come up with a different answer, okay? And a different uh, total profit, so. This was using that constant elasticity demand curve uh, that we used in this problem. And you can see as well the source code here on the Stack Overflow question.